Hi, my name is Jeanette Jobson and welcome to the studio. Today I'm going to share with you um, a demo of a tomato and invite you to participate if you want to learn more in one of our palette knife workshops. There's introduction to palette knife, which is a one day course, or there's a longer two day course for those who want a more intensive experience. For this, I'm going to be using two palette knives, a slightly larger one, and I'll put the numbers of these in the comments or in the, the show notes below, um, and also share the palette that I'm going to be using. I've created a drawing of it, a line drawing, and I'm using a sized paper because this is a study. It's not a final painting. It's not going to be sold. It's not going to um, be used for anything else. So I'm creating this just as a rough draft, and I really encourage people to do that, to uh, be able to get an idea of the colors and the layout. And you kind of work out all your problems when you do a study. It shouldn't take long, should take no more than uh, 15 to 30 minutes to create a study. Uh, and then if you're comfortable with it and you've worked out your problems and you want to proceed further, then you can go ahead and create your final painting on the support of your choice. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to mix, uh, starting with some of my colors, I'm going to pre-mix them so I have fairly quick access to the colors as I need them. With this image, as you can see, there's a lot of oranges in them. Everything has got that kind of warm hue to it, aside from the background, which has some kind of blues and purples in it. So um, looking at my color, I'm using um, ultra, or sorry, I'm using cadmium yellow light and cadmium red light to give me a, uh, a fairly bright yellow. I may need some more, and I may need to tone that value down a little bit because if I hold that up to the image itself, you can see that it's it's too bright. So I'm going to add and pull some of that out because I know I will need some for the darker shadows. I'm going to put some burnt sienna into here. That's going to tone down my colors. I can go back here and think, nope, that's not going to work. Still needs a little adjustment. So I'm going to add some more of my Cad Red to that, that burnt sienna mixture. I can think, okay, that's not a bad color for that side view. Mixing up the lighter color for the top of the tomato. I can have added more yellow to that mix. And it's looking okay, it needs to be maybe dulled down with a little tiny bit of white. I'm not going to use huge amounts of white in your painting. Uh, it, if you do, it will lighten the shade for sure, but it will also make it appear slightly chalky. Now for some of this, I'm going to pull a bit more out further to the side. And as in this section right here, it's a little bit of green, so I'm going to add a tiny bit of my ultramarine blue into that. That lighter mix, and I think that might be just the shade we need. those that's the main colors that I need uh, I'm gonna worry about the stock later uh, and I will add more colors as I go for the background I'm going to use a mix of ultramarine or sorry I'm gonna for the shadow first I'm gonna make, use a mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna this gives a nice rich chromatic black. You don't want to use a solid black because it's pretty dull and it deadens color a little bit. I can add that as I need. I will use another version, maybe a slightly bluer version of this with some white added to it to increase and lighten it as I work my way across useful to have these kind of little color threads. You 
you can mix a little, you can mix a lot. I know for this background, I would need a fair bit of paint. Because it's not going to be a large study, I'm not going to mix large quantities of paint. So my color threads there, get a better view from this angle, my color threads there for the background is ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and a little white added. So let's get started on painting. As with most paintings, I uh, start with the darkest area. I've got a large amount of background and a lighter object. I will use, usually put the object in first and then put in the background and make any adjustments that the impact of the color of the background um, makes within the painting. We're not looking for perfect mixes of color at this point. We have permission to go outside the line. We're just putting down a scraping of color right now. Then let's go to our next color, which is going to be the darkest reds and oranges. as well as the paint itself and especially when you're painting over wet paint you have to watch your pressure <laughs> and your, how hard you're pushing down or you will mix the colors or you didn't want to mix them. Now this piece is very rough at this point and it's intentionally that way. We're going to expand it and create um, a more mingled effect. We put our little highlights in here. Remember, highlights are, tend to rarely be white. They tend to reflect the environment around it. And we can go back in and work and change it as we need. In many cases, I like to disturb the edges a bit to give it a bit of interest. So I'm just pulling some of the paint within that tomato out into the background. Again, this would be done more towards the end of the painting process. And you just want to drag, you just want to drag the knife out to create that interest. So it's starting to build. To further enhance some of the painting, I use some of the complementary colors that would be uh, seen um, against some of the colors. So, for instance, the yellows, um, violet is the complementary color of yellow. Um, so, I may add a touch of that in there and see if that works. 
if, it, if you don't like it, the advantage with a power knife is that you can pull it out of it. And the same with the red. A so complement of red would be green. Uh, so you, this can be introduced into any of the shadows and it's going to work beautifully. Simply because it is complementary and it is going to enhance and, and kind of make those colors vibrant. Depending on how much you want in, you may want a little, you may want a lot, you may want to kind of have it against the side of the painting. You can make it lighter, you can make it darker, but you will get um, a distinct different feel to your painting. You can let some of the colors mingle. And impressionism is all about the layers of color and how they interact with each other and then how the eye interprets them. So the more layers you put on, the more colors you use, the more effective your painting is going to be. The more touches, kind of towards the end of your study, you add more touches into the leaves and the stem. Just to highlight some of those areas, you can kind of enhance where you think it needs enhancing. You can touch up areas, and touching up can go on forever and ever, it seems like it. I'm not so keen on this section right here, so I'm going to pull some of that out and redo it. What don't I like? It's a bit heavy, that suggested highlight, which is right here on the image. So I want it to be more supple in this piece. Towards the end is where your thickest layers of paint are going to shine. You're building colors and shapes previously. Right now you want to ensure that you can actually see those layers. You want texture in your painting. And you want to adjust it as you go. To see what works and what doesn't work. It, it, painting is all about constant decision making and making adjustments. It, it's a never-ending work in motion almost. It, it, it's like building a garden. You seem to never stop. But there is a point where the stopping point is where you would decide that, okay, I can't add anything else that's going to enhance or change this image to make it more effective and more appealing. So that's when you learn to stop. go back in and make changes to shapes. I can carve out sections within the painting to define them a little bit more. I can add more color. I can add more um, texture. So this pretty much is the value in how it um, how it's impacted. I'm just carving out those highlights a little bit to make them less um, obtrusive. You don't want a highlight to be so distracting that it's the first thing that draws your eye in. So when you're creating a painting, you want the piece to look as um, realistic as possible, but in that painterly way, in the impressionistic style, which is the laying down of color. So when I look at a piece close up, it's just a mishmash of colors. When I step back to an appropriate viewing point, you can see how that piece comes together. So the eye visually um, mixes the colors. And when you're painting something, you need to be able to step back from that piece and analyze it. And once you step back, you can see whether something needs to have more work done with it. <clears throat> if you're up on top of it all the time, when you finally step back, you're going to have usually issues in terms of shape, form, or color. And to be able to make those work, 
you, you need to at least every 20 minutes step back from the piece. So this pretty much is the final image for a study. This will be completed at a future workshop and be a demo for uh, individuals who are taking that workshop and learning the technique of 